Let's talk about the basics of transitions. You can add transitions to all of your clips, for example, at the beginning and the end or in between clips to make it more smooth in between those shots. So let's jump into it. If you are on the cut page, you just have here on top this transition. You have three categories, video transitions, audio transitions, and you can make your own favorites. So for example, if I go here in and any transition, let's say this adaptive dissolve, if I right click on it, I can say add to favorites. And now under favorites, I have this in my favorites. So you can go through those transitions and then make your own list and then you can just use them faster. If you don't like this anymore, you can just go onto star here and click the star and it's gone. The transitions are also categorized in different transitions. So for example, let's close all of those ones here. So those are the transitions that you can use. You have dissolve, which basically also is like fading and mixing in between. You have iris, it's shapes and stuff like that. Then you have motion with motion blur and this shapes, wipe, fusion transitions, those are the more advanced transitions and then also resolve FX color and, and so on and so on. So there's many on it. This is already one of the reasons why I think DaVinci Resolve on the iPad is pretty amazing. So let's just go over a couple of those. How do you actually add them? So I have two clips here, two drone shots that I now into the uh, timeline, this one and this one. So now we want to make a transition in between those two. So if I go to transition and I now just take this, let's say the, oh yeah, by the way, this is the default transition. We will talk about this in a second, but the red mark is the default transition. If I want to add a transition, so for example, I now take this adaptive dissolve and I drag it down to my timeline, you will realize, oh, I can't use this here. Why? I, t I explain you. I will now take this clip here and I move it to the top because you have to have a little bit of space in between those clips so that it can actually apply the effect. What does it mean? So for example, here in the end is a red line. This means it's the absolute end of my clip. I don't want that. I have to go a little bit in here and also the same for that clip, a little bit go in here. So now we have enough meat so that we can place our transition. So if I select this transition, move it down, you will see that I can now have this little icon here which is basically in between those two clips. If I drop it, I have this transition now in between those two. If you drag this clip here, you can have a couple of options. You can either like just drag it in between clips, but you can also drag it on the end and then the beginning of clips. Like for example, I can even drag this transition here at the beginning and have it there. And another way to add transitions is if you see here where my playhead is, I have this little white arrow. If I now double tap on the transition, boom, it will place it exactly here where this white line is. This is the same button like this one here. This will always apply the default transition. Boom. What is the default transition? Okay, so the default transition is this transition that is marked here as a red one. You can always change it. By default, it's the cross dissolve. It's basically just fading from one to the next. So if I right click, let's say on, I wanna have the smooth cut as my default transition, I can right click and make as standard transition. So if you hit this button here, it will always add the default transition to the next point where the arrow is. Another way how you can do this, let's go to the edit page just for a second. If I mark my clips and I can mark as many clips as I want. And if I use my shortcuts now, for example, my shortcut for adding a video transition is option D if you use my shortcuts option D and then you see the video transition is added there as well. Let's change this one back to this default because I actually like the, the cross dissolve and then the most of the time you will actually use the, the default transition. So one more thing before we move on, if we now talked about the default transition, you can also change the default transition time and for that you have to open the shortcuts menu and then here under application DaVinci Resolve you have to give a keyboard shortcut to this to this preference menu. I just gave it the shortcut zero. So now if I hit zero, for example, I get this huge new preference window. Don't be discouraged. I will go over this preferences in a different video. What you can do is here, go to user, and then here under editing, there's a couple of those default settings that you can change. So for example, the standard generator, which is just a basic color that you can apply, would be five seconds. Or the standard transition duration is one second. So if we want to change this one now, for example, to 0 0.5 and hit save, so if I go now in and I drag this transition, you will see it's smaller. So now from all of the time, it will always just be 0 0.5. This is a global setting, so you can always change that here. For the beginning, just leave it as one, that's fine. I just wanted to show you where you can find this. But anyway, you can also change the size anytime. So for example, if I want that this transition is now longer, I can just go here on the end, click it and drag it longer or shorter 
as ever I like. And also, if you click a transition, you can go here into the inspector and under the inspector, you have this new icon that is the transition and all the settings for those transitions you can change here. So for example, number one, you can always change your transitions. You don't have to reapply them. You can also say like, oh, I don't want to have the this one. I want to have a box. So, okay, let's do the box one box transition. I can change the duration. That's basically the time that we just changed. I can change this here in as well. You can change the alignment center, the borders. For example, here, if I want to have a white border on it or not, I see the border of that one. Every transition has its own little settings. And I would encourage you just play around with a couple of those transitions. I will now in this video not go through all of the transitions, but you can change that. Like here, for example, the border, I can also change the color if I want to. I could make this now red and then this would be a red border transition. So one more thing, if you want to see your transitions very fast, you can always just go in here in the transitions and use a mouse or a trackpad and just hover over those transitions and then you can see them before you even apply them and by the way if you want to use for example those fancy transitions like the one that i created the transition pack you can also just go in here on the fusion transitions scroll down and then you will see all those different transitions like for example the glitch effects or for example here the light leaks that you can apply or for example if i scroll down to the zoom in transitions here zoom in transition and I have a separate video how you can install them. The warning that I want to say to you is beginner mistake number one is they always overuse transitions. You can tell if a beginner video, video editor uh, is just making too many of those transitions. So rather have jump cut. A jump cut is just simply if I have a clip and I make a cut from that clip to that clip. This one, the jump cut is the most used transition. It's not a transition, but it's the most used from way of going from one clip to the next. Rather think about your story and use those than using a transition. Of course, we have those cool travel videos that use those transitions and I like them too, but this is the warning. I just want to give it to you. Use those discreet, respectful, not too much, rather less than too much. So one more thing, if you add transitions, for example, like the zoom in transition, another way how you can tell if someone is a beginner or a pro is that they use this, those zoom in transitions the wrong way. I want to give you an example. If we have this shot now with the mountains in the background, the proper way how to use, for example, a zoom in would be if my next clip is a more close up of the same mountain. Then I could show this drone shot moving and then zooming to the mountain. And the beginners, they just use the zoom in transition from everything. So let's, for example, you have a drone shot and in the next clip, you zoom into a face. It makes no sense to use it that way. So the proper way is always to think about those shots, which one is the first one, which one is the second one, and then use a transition that seamlessly goes from one to the next. That's the idea. So if you want to get the transition pack that I created just for the DaVinci Resolve iPad version, you have two ways how you can get this. Number one, of course, if you're a masterclass student, you have free access is a bonus of the masterclass student. And if you really want to become a better video editor and use DaVinci Resolve and know all the tricks and hacks, I would recommend that you anyway get the masterclass. But the second way is I have a link in the description. We also sell this pack separately. So if you just want to have the transitions in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad, then just go to the link in the description. I hope you liked this video. If yes, hit like, subscribe, ding and ding in the bam bang gong. I'm Daniel and we see us in the next video. Bye.